the next General Hospital. That was a great way to start the day. From now on, we won't be seeing each other there. I'm planning on taking you for a ride. What kind of proposition? There may not be as many of those as I thought. There's not really a reason for me to stick around. What if I gave you one? Hi, everyone. Welcome to my video. In the Two Scoots column for General Hospital during the week of August 19, 2024, the commentary reflects on the latest developments in the soap opera, critiquing how some storylines might be losing momentum. The phrase, too little, too late, suggests that some plot resolutions or character actions are happening after too much buildup, resulting in a sense of disappointment among fans. The column likely explores the pacing issues, character decisions, and missed opportunities that have left viewers feeling unsatisfied. It delves into the ongoing drama, relationships, and plot twists, while questioning whether the show can regain its former excitement. Please subscribe my channel and stay with me. Does it feel like the writers have suddenly shifted gears, scrapped storylines, and put a reset on some of the characters? It was a week of change. While some of it was for the better, other parts felt a bit like too little too late. Let's discuss in this week's two scoops of new tomorrows. Change is in the air as Chris Van Etten marks his return as co-head writer alongside Elizabeth Court. I have to admit, it's been interesting to watch the last few episodes, as some storylines were quickly wrapped up. A shakeup was needed, so I'm not complaining. Much. The biggest development was the unexpected breakup of Christina and Allison Blaze Rogers Ramirez. It all started when Blaze was given an opportunity of a lifetime to go on tour as the opening act for Port Charles alum Miguel Moore's Ricky Martin, a wonderful nod to the past that made me smile. The timing couldn't have been worse, though, because Blaze was expected to pack up and leave for Hong Kong immediately. Naturally, Blaze balked because Christina was still recovering from the fall and losing the baby, but Brooke Lynn didn't make it easy. I was kind of taken aback by Brooke Lynn's assertion that Blaze should go because Christina had people who loved her that would take care of her. Excuse me, BLQ, Blaze is one of those people. I applauded Blaze for putting Christina first, but then Natalia slithered in, turned on the waterworks, and begged Christina to let Blaze go. Christina agreed because Christina is currently mired in grief, anger, regret, and revenge. There's no room for romantic love in that toxic mix. I'm going to miss Jacqueline Grace Lopez, but I'm quite annoyed that we are stuck with Natalia. Nothing against Eva Laru. She's a wonderful actress, and I dearly loved her since her days on All My Children, but Natalia is not a nice person. In fact, she's a pretty vile human being. She justifies her hateful views by blaming it on her upbringing, yet she makes no real effort to open her mind and her heart. Her attitude seems to be, accept me as I am, even though I don't accept you. I also felt that Natalia was emotionally abusive and manipulative during most of her interactions with Blaze. Natalia cared more about Blaze's career than she did her own daughter's happiness. It's why I was thrilled that Blaze fired Natalia and warned her mother not to follow her. It was the best thing that Blaze could have done for herself. I don't know the plans for Natalia, but I hope a redemption arc is in her immediate future because Eva deserves better than being stuck playing a miserable creature like Natalia. That brings me to Sonny, who decided that he felt sorry for Natalia and gave her a reason to stay in town. Bad Sonny. He set her up as CFO of Deception, overseeing his investment in the cosmetics company. I love that Lois called him out on his real motivation for the stipulation. Sonny has a new conquest in his sights. Sonny's recent descent into bipolar depression was also quickly resolved. One day, he was spiraling into the deepest depths of despair and contemplating ending his life. And the following morning, after a dose or two of bipolar medication, he was right as rain and mending fences with his loved ones, starting with his main man, Jason Morgan. And just like that, the bromance picked up right where it left off. I do feel cheated, though, that the viewers weren't privy to Sonny reaching out to Jason for a lift home from the hospital. Of all the people on Sonny's apology tour, it was his me culpa to Jason that I most looked forward to. Jason has only ever been loyal to Sonny, to a fault. 
Yet Ava was able to easily manipulate Sonny into thinking the worst of his best friend. For the first time, it truly made me question if perhaps Sonny truly did view Jason as just a foot soldier who was only of consequence as long as he was loyal. The accusation had been bandied about for years by several people, but I always dismissed it, in part because it was never really tested like it was this time around. When Jason resurfaced, and it was revealed that he'd been working for the FBI, Sonny immediately assumed the worst. Thanks for being with me for so long. See you again in the next video.